Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having an awesome day wherever you are. And today's video is going to be something a little different. Today I'm going to be talking about 10 YouTube tips for growing your channel in 2018. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video. Alright guys, so before we get started with today's video, would you mind hitting the subscribe button down below for me? I'd really appreciate it. I put a new video out every single freaking day, so always have something new to watch. And yeah, it'd be really cool if you did. So, I'm going to be giving 10 tips today for 2018 to get your channel going if you're thinking about starting one, or you just started one, or you just have a couple subscribers and you're trying to make it work. Now, obviously I don't have like a million subscribers or anything, but you guys have asked me to do this video since I do post every single day. I have grown a lot in the past two years me doing this I've been doing this for two years and a month so I've learned a couple things I've got a couple things so let's start off with number one number one um, the tip that I have for you is something that anytime someone asks me for tips on growing a channel is the only thing I ever say and that is be consistent now I'm not saying you have to post every day like me that's crazy talk at least post once a week this brings more people to your channel more often. They want to see what else you have. Sometimes on the right hand of the screen, they'll suggest another video from you. But if you don't have many videos, they don't have many things to suggest. Also, if you tell them that you post once a week, that's more of an incentive for them to just subscribe because they know there's always going to be more content coming out and they want to follow up on that. If there's not more content ever coming up, why would they hit the subscribe button? You know? Just be consistent. Try to post at least once a week if you can. I started off my YouTube channel doing three days a week. Um, then I went to five and now I do every single day. So just grow as you can, but try to do it once a week if possible. If you can't do it at least once a week, YouTube's probably not for you. I worked a full-time job for the first two years that I was doing this. And I still like had a lot of other responsibilities. You can do it. You can do it at least one video a week, I promise. Next up, the second tip I have for you is get used to the camera. This took me a long time to do. Like the first year, I was not really... Like, oh yeah, I could sit in front of the camera, but watching back at those videos now, I had no business sitting in front of a camera. <laughs> so when I look back at my old videos, I was like trying to be all polite and nice and sweet and like this and monotone. And now I just like talking to a normal human, probably a little bit extra than I would talk to a normal human because I don't like people. But you know how that goes. Just try to be yourself. Do a couple test runs is what I always recommend. Get in front of the camera, film your video. If it's not like a tutorial or something, if you're just doing a product review, film that product review, watch it. If you get bored when you're watching it, refilm it. Refilm it at least twice until you are happy with how it went. Sometimes when you're recording, I do this all the time. I'll mess with what I'm saying, I have to refilm the intro. It's just part of life. Don't just try to do a dry run with no cuts. It doesn't really work most of the time. And then sometimes when you get to the point where you have some subscribers, they're not going to care if you mess up what you say because, you know, you're human. But just try a couple times getting in front of the camera. Watch it back. I don't like the sound of my own voice. I hate watching my own videos. But I know a lot of people are like that. You have to get over it. It'd be fine. Also, don't let people watch your videos that you know unless you're comfortable with it. I know when I was starting out and I told my boyfriend I was doing YouTube, he wanted to watch them. I was like, please, if you're going to watch them, don't watch them in front of me. It makes me uncomfortable. I'm not happy with the quality of my work yet. And just try to keep the videos to yourself until you're happy with them. That's, I think, a really great tool. Rewatch the videos, redo them if you don't like them, and then keep them to yourself until you're happy with the quality you're putting out. Next up is number three, and that is something that I think is kind of like a double whammy. And that is don't invest in your channel when you're starting out. Like once you have some subscribers and you know you're going to be doing this full time eventually, then you can invest in it. But please don't put a whole bunch of money into your YouTube channel. Most people don't make it. I don't even know if I'm going to make it, you know, like realistically. But 99% of people quit YouTube. So I know you might be really passionate about it. And that's awesome. You might really make it, but please don't invest a lot of money until you know if this is for you. Because people will say, oh yeah, I'm a YouTuber, that seems like so much fun, until they actually do it and find out how much work it is. And then they kind of quit, and then they invested so much money in stuff that they're not going to use. And I really don't recommend investing a lot of money in it. I still use my phone as my camera. Yeah, it's a thousand dollar phone. Man, that's expensive. But just don't invest a lot of money in like camera, huge lighting kit 
huge ring light, whatever. Lighting is super important to your channel, yes, but you can use natural light for a while, see how it's, if it's for you or not. Use some lamps that you have around your house with white light bulbs, not yellow, and then see how it works. If it doesn't work very well, then you didn't waste any money. But if it does work out, you'll eventually get some monetization and you can invest in products for your channel. The next one is something that I have a huge problem with myself, and that is comparing yourself to others. There are so many other YouTube channels out there, and I am so jealous 90% of the time, and it's something I wish I didn't do. Because you see people who post once a month and don't care about the videos they're putting out, and they have so many more subscribers than you who are working super, super hard on your channel, and it's really depressing. So try not to compare yourself to other YouTubers. Again, I can't talk if you do because I do it every day. I'm like, oh, well she posts once a month and she does like a hair video that she doesn't really care about. And she's got 55,000 subscribers and I'm sitting here with 35,000. And I post every day. Doesn't really seem fair. I mean, it's not fair. This world's not fair anyways. But just try not to compare yourself to others because it really will just let you down. It's terrible. Next up is number five, and that is to have a niche. N have something on your channel that's a little more unique than other people. Now, yeah, there's like a kajillion beauty channels out there like mine. But I have like a little bit of a niche. I don't care about like being colorful. I think being colorful makes me a little more unique. I think that um, reviewing every single Jeffree Star product is something that I specifically do on my channel. I don't review every single brand. Um, I do review other brands, of course, but like I promise to you that I'm always going to review every single Jeffree Star launch. And since that is an Andy brand that me poor, people are really into finding out if it's good or not online rather than seeing it in the store, I think it's a really good niche to have. I would definitely recommend like finding your niche. If you're getting into beauty, brands like ColourPop who always have affordable launches, always new launches, that's something really good you can invest in. Choose a like cheaper brand if you can. If you're going to start doing product reviews and review all of the items from that brand. Like if you're into tech, Logitech has a lot of good affordable tech items that you can review and they always have new versions of it. So there's always like some kind of niche that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on that you can kind of get into and wiggle your way into the community. Next up is number six and that is to be honest. Good freaking grief is this the hardest one for people to understand. Do not kiss a company's butt just to get free product hopefully in the future it doesn't work um, <laughs> um hopefully um you will be honest with your audience if you don't like a product tell me you don't like a product don't try to be like sugar coating about it if you don't like it tell me you don't like it yeah yeah i think that's pretty fair be honest with them don't try to make up fake stories for like a super interesting story time or whatever be honest with your audience. If you don't have anything to say, don't say anything. Don't try to make something up. You know, just just be honest with people. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Just be honest with someone. Why do you have a reason to lie to your audience? If they figure out, you say, oh, this product is amazing. I love it so much. Send me free stuff. And then the, your audience tries it and they're like, this is crap. They're never gonna come back to your channel because they don't can't trust what you say. And I really hate when people lie on the internet. Next up is number seven, and that is to have an appealing background and lighting. We already talked about lighting a little bit. You can use natural light if you're starting out, or I have two umbrella lights from um, Amazon. They were like $55, and then I use a editing software that brings a whole lot of light and saturation and color into my pictures, but also have an appealing background. So I'll move. Um, my background just has a cat picture, like some pictures in the wall. Um, I'll put a little sign down here I can change the text on. I have a little display box. Most of this came from Hobby Lobby and TJ Maxx, so it's really affordable stuff. And just have an appealing background. No one wants to see like your messy room in the background. No one says you have to go paint a wall and decorate it like I did. But if you can just have like your bed in the background with nice pillows on it, I think that's a really good tip is just have an appealing background because no one wants a messy, a messy yucky background, huh honey? Do they? No, see? No, they don't want that. They don't want a messy background. Next up is number eight, and that is to reply to comments when you get them. So whether they're good or bad, try to read your comments pretty often. The little heart button they have now for you to love your people's comments on your page is really convenient. It brings their attention, sometimes you get a notification. If you got a heart from Porcelain, then they'll come back to your video, and if they like, they're like, oh, she acknowledged me, maybe they'll hit the subscribe button. 
maybe they'll do that. Sometimes people really just like interaction. I love interacting with you guys anyways, so something I love to do is reply to all the comments if I can. And if you get negative hateful comments, which you will, like I'd say 1 out of 50 comments for me is like really bad. Um, especially on bigger videos, when you have more views on a video, that's more likely that you're going to get really crap comments from people. Whether it's attacking you personally, whether it's attacking how you approach something in your video, um, people really could just come for- like, yesterday I got this comment, and I don't know why, like, I get hate comments all the time, but this one wasn't even a hate comment, and it really bothered me, it's like, your face, it's chunky. I know. Thanks for telling me. I just said, your face, it's chunky. And like, out of all the hate comments telling me that I should die and I shouldn't be on YouTube and all that stuff, that one really got me. I don't know why. I know it's chunky. Anyways, you're gonna get hate comments. You're gonna have to deal with it. You can just delete them like I do. Sometimes on like, videos that have a ton of views on them, I don't even bother deleting them. I just click the dislike button, so maybe they'll show down farther <laughs> in the uh, comment stream. They won't be up top. But, yeah. Just... Respond to comments if you can. Ignore bad comments. Delete them if you want to. If someone's really coming for you or trying to attack you, block them. It took me a while to figure out how to block someone on YouTube, but I did figure it out eventually, and sometimes you have to. Number nine is to remind people to subscribe. So in the beginning of this video, you saw my intro, and it showed it's subscribing. And then right after, I told you guys to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below for me, because I upload it every day. Now, that's really good because I don't think people remember to subscribe most of the time. Unless they really like the video at the end and they, like, you know, do it. I remind people at the beginning and the end of the video to subscribe to my channel and why they subscribe to my channel. I always give a reason. That's because I upload all the time. People always want new videos to watch. So I always remind them to subscribe and why you should subscribe. I give them a reason and then I remind them, hey, do that for me. I'd really appreciate it, you know? I think it's nice just to remind people to subscribe. Sometimes I just forget. Sometimes I feel like I say it too much. But, you know, I'm human. Number 10 is social media. So if you have a lot of friends on Facebook and you're happy with your videos that you're starting out, post them on Facebook. They'll watch them. If you're friends with you, they'll probably share it too so you can get some more views from other people other than them. Also, even Instagram, post a picture of, say, the product and you together. And then you can say, hey, check the link in my bio. I'm reviewing this product, or if it's a makeup tutorial, show your makeup tutorial and say, hey, there's a link in my bio to the makeup tutorial if you want to see it. And people will be like, oh, this is really beautiful. Let me check this out. Oh, yeah, I really wanted that product. Let me see if this is any good. You also don't have to put it on your Instagram feed. You can throw it into your Instagram stories, save it as like a moment if you want to, and that way they always can go check back on it. If you post something all the time, once a week, you can just throw it in your story or in your Snapchat story. You can just swipe up and they can see your new video. I think that's a really useful tool you can do. And cross-referencing everything back to your channel is so smart. Anyways, if you guys want this to be a series of videos, me teaching you some more YouTube tips, maybe more in-depth about a certain topic, let me know by giving me a like on this video and let me, down let me know down below if you like this type of video because I'll certainly do more for you. Of course, I'm not a YouTube expert, but I do have over 6 million views on my channel. I think that stands for something, right? I don't know. Anyways, I hope you guys have an awesome day wherever you are. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel before you leave. I put a new video every single freaking day. It's always something new to watch. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.